daily tutorial for you guys. Remember, these are daily now. So if you want to see more, do not forget to click subscribe. This one is how to draw a very classic looking peony flower. Enjoy. Right, people, how to draw a peony flower or a peony. Don't know how you want to pronounce it. I'm not too sure which way is the right way, but I'll call them both. <laughs> anyway, this one's going to be a bit more kind of classic. This could be considered old school or like sort of traditional sort of Japanese. It's more simple, more bold color, but it's very impactful. I'll be doing a neo trad version and I'll be doing like um, a dot work version as well. But this is the first one. Now it's going to be done on Procreate on the iPad Pro. As usual, four layers, sketching line by shading color. If you, if, uh, you can just do this on normal paper, though, with pens, markers, paints, whatever you want to use. Just copy what I do on there. And that's that simple. Let's start off with sketching, dark reds, sketching, technical pencil. So it looks like this. So to start with, I'm going to get a circle. It's another circle. You know, this one's debatable, but I like my peony flowers to kind of fit in this star shape almost. So we basically have the centerpiece, and then the background leaves, I kind of have like one this direction, one sort of this direction, one this, and one here. You know, especially for this particular old school one. The uh, Neotrad ones don't really apply to this rule. But anyway, so you start with, so I'm going to start here, and the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to sketch in this rough sort of triangle curve here. You know, this one's going to be the base layer, so it's going to be like the most forward piece, and then we're going to have like two pieces to the side, so just two little triangle shapes just here, getting like the side parts, and then we're going to slow a layer backwards, so we're going to have like a layer part here, so one here, and maybe like one just here, so you want, you want this kind of gap in the middle, you know, but not too big, you just want like a little kind of gap in the middle. And they're going to kind of overlap as we go around. So I'm just going to turn this down a touch. Now we've got this. I'm starting on so you see everything nice and clear. So yeah, so we've got this base layer here. So what we're going to do to begin with is bring in this base shape just to the bottom. So we're going to bring in this nice curve like this. And I like to make my ends just point a little bit outwards. And then I'm going to curve around the bottom of it. And very simple, very big kind of bubbly sort of circular sort of shapes. Come around it, like so. And this one here, we're going to curve around. And then again, we're going to curve into very big, sort of bubbly, uh, bubbly sort of circle shapes. And this is going to be the kind of base up, build up for most of it. So we're going to curve around, big bubbly shapes. Curve around, bubble shapes. And just kind of keep building up until we kind of feel like we had the right sort of space. There we go, I like that. We got a little space just in there. So that kind of builds up that. I'm going to start off with the bottom piece now. So I basically want this first one to kind of fit in this kind of area. And I want to have a little overturn. So I'm going to start off with the overturn. So I'm going to bring this curve down here. And similar to how we just done there, I'm going to go kind of bubble shapes, curve them back, like that. And quite large as well, you know, like here I'm going to have sort of three on there. I'll put it out three on for most of them. I'm going to curve here. Do another curve. This one I might have sort of dipping down, so I might have a little dip and then just curve back around like that. Just kind of sort of change the shape up a touch. Have that little overturn here again. So it's great. A couple of bubble shapes coming off of that. Now this one's going to kind of fit in this area. Make this one a bit more kind of rounded, so I'm going to keep these bubble shapes going. Bring it back like that. This one's going to come out here. So again, a little overturn. So I have two on this one. Big bubble shapes curving around. That overturn again. So see, it's just a very nice kind of repeating a pattern almost. This one I'm going to curve here. I'm going to see. I'm going to sort of just curve it a touch the other way, just to make it a touch bit different. Curve down, and one can curve there. So you kind of got this kind of sort of base shape to it, and then in between you're going to have like the leaves. Now the leaves are basically going to be made up of this shape, and then two smaller versions on the outside. So it's going to sketch these in. Like so, and do a fair few of them, you know, they want them to be kind of around it. I tend to do them like in between the corners, I quite like them. And I like to have at least sort of one where it sort of changes up a little bit. So this one I'm going to have like this one here, and I'm going to have another one just kind of sitting behind a bit there. And this one might just have one single bit just here. You know, just like that, just so it's not the exact same thing, you know, so it doesn't look too symmetric around it. 
Oops. Little muscle down there. I'm going to go line work. I'm going to select inking. Studio pen. I'm going to go black. And I want it to be nice and thick, you know, for this particular style. So I'm going to go over everything we've just done now, and I'll add a few little extras, and you know, I'll talk you through them as we do them. So here, I'm just going to whip these in. I'm literally just doing the outline part, so I'm not doing no sort of detail bits, like there's no curves on the inside. This is all very simple, you know. It's, what makes this style so nice is like the simplicity of it. You know, if you overcomplicate it, and then the simplistic stuff at the same time, it doesn't really work in my opinion. You either have to go all that detail or kind of like simple. You know, the middle ground doesn't particularly work for me. Not that it can't work, that it can do, it's just it's a hard one to mix because it's like two different styles. But there's always people out there surprise you, you know, sometimes some people are really good at mixing up styles. This guy called Yogi Barrow is amazing at it. He sort of does um kind of heavy realistic and like old school stuff and it's just blows my mind. I love his work. You know, not easy anyone, there's a lot out there who can do it. But I'm just teaching the one style today, so just going around the edge of everything we just drew there. So that's all the inside bits. I had a little gap in the middle, I might just throw a few little dots, like so. I'll colour in the background of them. And then here, I'm going to go around the outside of these now. Make sure to join up so you basically got like, you know, it looks like that. So you've got your three shapes, but they all join up to one shape. Like so. And don't worry about going as fast as me. I know I'm very fast at this, you know, it's just... I just know what I'm doing with this. It's second nature. I've been drawing for God knows how many years now. Drawing, tattooing. It works. So that'll do it for that. So I'm going to turn off the sketching layers now. So you're left with what is a very simple, big, bold outline, which is part of the beauty of this. Then what I'm going to do. Click on it, set it to reference, and I'm going to go to shading now. I'm going to use selection tool at the top left hand corner, automatic. Now, a few people have trouble when they select it and they get like this kind of border around the outside, you know, like a little kind of sort of like fade bit. To get rid of that, click, drag to the left, and you'll see that threshold selection bit go up until you're in the 90s. Once you're in the 90s, you won't get it. So I'm going to go red. I'm going to go airbrush in. I'm going to use medium airbrush for this, so you get like a bit of a soft edge. Check the size of it, yeah, that do. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this one to begin with, this middle bit. And I'm going to go red, and I'm going to leave this highlight just around the edge. So I'm going to go everywhere except for the edge. And I do this bit here, and then what I'm going to do is get my razor, shrink this down a touch, and just do the edge of that line. So just where this kind of bit goes up, just have that, that little highlight just there. Now I'm going to use this red for every bit that's technically kind of woke on the outside. And I'll explain what I mean when I get to the inside, but you'll know what I mean when I get to it. Next, we're basically going to have red, and then we're going to have pink. So I'm doing this for all this bit, you know, basically every time we get to the edge, I'm just like leaving that little highlight. The only time I'm not leaving the edge is when it kind of goes underneath, like this one sits underneath it, so I leave the edges, except for where it kind of goes underneath. Like so. Like so. And now I'm going to show what I mean. So the outside parts I consider are those bits and the overturns. The inside bits are those parts. So I just do the outside parts for now. Don't do the inside bits. So I'm going to go here. And when we get to this edge bit here, I'm just going to kind of flick this shade down a touch, just like that. Just thread down. I do love this style, especially when it's done very big. 
And when you see a lot of the old school, like the traditional sort of Japanese kind of body suits, and you see these thrown there, like extra large, they just oh, so strong. So they've got a nice kind of pink tone here. Yeah, that'll do. Just increase this size a bit, this bit quicker. So the exact same principle here. So every time it goes underneath, I shade up to the line, and every part on the outside, I just leave that light, uh, leave that little highlight. So I'm getting tongue tied here. And just shading the rest like so. Let's do the same thing for all of these. But that's what I love about this, you know, especially this particular kind of flower, you know, there's so many different ways of doing it. Like you're gonna see when I do the Neotrad version, and then when I do the dot work version. And I'm hoping by the time I've done all three of those, they have a really good understanding, you know, how to sort of change parts and how to add parts. You know, like the detailing of the Neo Trev, which might be able to sort of be able to use the um, the pattern work of the uh, dot work style one. So now we've got that, I'm going to select the leaf green bits. So I'm going to select the dark green to begin with. And just to make this one easy, I'm going to do it in reverse. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to colour it all in and then just erase around the edge. You can have a line down the centre if you want. Used a bit thinner. You know, but this one I'm not. I quite like the outside part looking like that, so we're just gonna do it that way. And you probably notice here as well, I'm not using any black. You know, it is not necessary, especially for this style. It can be added, but sometimes the beauty of this is like the boldness of it, and sometimes that black takes away from that boldness. You know, sometimes it enhances, but sometimes it can also take away. You know, don't be afraid to use it, because black is a very, very important colour when it comes to, especially tattoo art. You know, certain styles like old school and stuff, you know, if it doesn't, if it doesn't have black, it just doesn't feel the same. But a style like this, you don't particularly need it, you know. We've got the big bold outline. You know, it's not necessary for the shading. Lastly, that inside part, just there, is usually yellow, like an orange or a yellow. And there you have it. That is how you draw a peony, peony flower, but sort of traditional sort of style, like either old school or Japanese. I mean, it works in both sort of styles. It's that same kind of principle of colour and shading. You know, it's probably a bit more on Japanese sort of side, but yeah. I hope you like it. Check out my other ones. Like I said, you know, you've got the Neo Trad version and you've got the um, other dot work version. And they're going to be coming after day after day. So I'm going to have these three days in a row. So yeah, keep an eye out for them. I am Z Rock and Puppet, and I will see you next time. Peace.